This is section 4.3. How derivatives affect the shape of a graph. In the section 4.1, we saw how to use the derivative to determine the absolute minimum and maximum functions values of a function. However, there is a lot more information about a graph that can be determined from the first derivative of a function. We will start looking at that information in this section. Let's suppose that we have a function f of x. We know that one of the interpretations of the first derivative is the rate of change of the function. If the rate of change is a positive number, positive slope, then the function is increasing. And if the rate of change is a negative number, negative slope, then the function is decreasing. Also, if the rate of change of the function is zero, then the function is not changing. Since rates of change of a function are nothing more than the derivative, we can summarize these observations with the following facts. If f prime of x is greater than zero for every x on some interval, i, then f of x is increasing on the interval. Same if it is less than zero, then it is decreasing on the interval. And if it is equal to zero, then it is constant on the interval. So find the intervals on which f is increasing or decreasing. For f of x equals 3x to the fourth minus 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 5. Therefore, first we need to find the derivative. Once we find the derivative, we can get 12x times x minus 2 times x plus 1. And then we need to find the critical numbers. So we need to solve each of those, and we get 12x equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0, which is a positive 2, and x plus 1 equals 0, which gives us a negative 1. Now we make a chart. So on the interval, we check where it is positive and negative. And then we can figure out that since the derivative is negative for the first one, positive for the second one, negative for the third one, positive for the fourth one is decreasing for the first one, increasing for the second one, decreasing on the third one, and increasing on the fourth one. So recall from Fermat's theorem, section 4.1, that all relative extrema of a function will be critical numbers for the curve, but that not all critical numbers will be relative extrema. Visually, we can see that the graph of a function increases to the left of a relative maximum and decreases to the right of a relative maximum. So the sign of the derivative changes from positive to negative. This idea is the basis for the following test. The first derivative test. Suppose that c is a critical number of a continuous function f. If f prime changes from positive to negative at c, then f has a local maximum at c. If it changes from negative to positive, then it has a local minimum. If it does not change, then it does not have a local max or min at C. So the first derivative test graphically. Here, it changes, so there's a, there's a max. Here, changes, so there's a local min. Here, there's no change, so there's no minimum or maximum. Same with this one, no minimum or maximum. Find the local maximum and minimum values of f. Well, I mean g. So g of x equals x plus 2 sine x between the interval 0 and 2 pi. Now differentiate to find the critical numbers. Then we plug them in to figure out where it is increasing and decreasing. So it is increasing between 0 and 2 pi over 3, decreasing 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3, and increasing 4 pi over 3 to 2 pi. Therefore, what we can figure out is that it is increasing, no change, decreasing, no change, increasing. And this graph supports what we have just found. You should take time to look at this and analyze this before moving on to the next slide. So, concavity. Concave up is decreasing. Looks like this. It's going down, but it's in the circle facing up. Concave increasing. It's going up and also facing up. Concave down is decreasing and facing down, and concave down increasing is facing down and going up. So a definition. If the graph of f lies above all of its tangents on an interval i, then it is called concave upward on i. If the graph of f lies below all of its tangents on an interval i, it is called concave downward on i. Therefore, look at this. From a to b, it is concave down. From B to C, concave up. C to D, concave down. D to E, concave up. E to P, 
concave up still, but then P to Q, concave down. Concavity test. If F prime of X is greater than zero for all X in I, then the graph of F is concave upward on I. If F prime of X is less than zero for all X, then an uh, NI, then the graph of F is concave down on I. So definition. If F prime of C exists and F double prime of C changes sign at X equals C, the curve changes from concave upward to concave downward or vice versa, then the point C F of C is an inflection point of the graph. Also, if F double prime C exists at the inflection point, then F double prime C equals zero. So find the intervals of concavity and the inflection point of f of x equals x to the 4 minus 4x to the 3. So f prime of x equals 4x cubed minus 12x squared, which also equals 4x squared times x minus 3. Now we can find the second derivative. And we'll explain more of that in a minute. But if we do that, we would just continue to take the 4 times the 3 and then leave the x squared, so that's 12x squared minus 24x, or 12x times x minus 2. Critical numbers are 0 and 3. Use the second derivative test, which I'm going to go over in just a minute, of f double prime 0 equals 0 and f double prime 3 equals 36, which is greater than 0. Since f double prime 0 is 0 and f prime of 0, then no local max or min. So since f double prime x equals 0, when x equals 0 or 2, we can divide the real number into two intervals. So we can figure out between 0 and 2, negative infinity to 0 is up, 0 to 2, negative, 2 infinity plus, and we can figure out what's going on with the inflection points in this graph by using the second derivative. And there's a graph to illustrate what I was just talking about, the inflection points. So the second derivative test. So above f double prime is continuous near c. If c prime, I mean if f of c, f prime of c equals zero and f double prime c is greater than zero, then f has a local minimum at c. If f prime of c equals zero and f double prime of c is less than zero, then it has a maximum at c. So it's kind of opposite what you think. If it's greater than zero, minimum, less than zero, maximum for the second derivative. Note, the second derivative test is inconclusive when f double prime c equals zero. There could be a max, min, or neither at this point, or when f, c, f double prime of c does not exist. So in these cases, we need to rely on the first derivative test instead. So sketch the graph of a function that satisfies the following conditions. So now you should pause, take time to graph, and on the next slide is the answer. This is the solution to the graph. Now you need to do your web assignment, section 4.3.